With Chemex, this is essentially, you know, there are a few different ways that we can do the same principle here. We've got pour over, which is the idea of doing a single um, filtered uh, pour into a cup of coffee. We've got Chemex, it's a little bit larger. And then you've got your home coffee maker, which is essentially the same principle. You're pouring water over a filtered uh, lot of coffee and making something hot and delicious out of it. Um, the problem with your typical everyday coffee maker is that there are a few basic principles of coffee preparation that those coffee makers don't adhere to. Um, one of the, the most important ones is water temperature. Ideally, you want to be brewing coffee at somewhere between 195 and 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, oftentimes, those home coffee makers, especially those K-cups and espressos and whatnot, they're not getting the water hot enough. So you're brewing at you know maybe 180 degrees. Uh, so that lower temperature is not giving you uh, much in the way of, of the full potential of flavor extraction that you could be getting. Another one of the issues is that a lot of the sprinklers on those thin coffee makers, they're just kind of doing a little dribble of water into the center of the grounds. What happens there is that the water is, is water. It's just trying to find its natural, um, uh, easiest path to the bottom of its, its gravity pull. So what you happen, have happen is channeling that happens within the ground of coffee. That channeling creates a lot of over-extraction in the coffee grounds that are touching that water and a lot of under-extraction or, you know, flavor that's left on the table in the rest of the, the grounds that are there. So with these methods, we're getting a really even coffee extraction. There are a few grinders that are able to do that pretty well. I'm just going to dump this hot water preheat. So I'm doing a few steps here that are, you know, ideally a, a mechanical grinder should be able to do this for you as well. But I'm, I'm preheating, so now I've got hot glass, I've got a filter that I poured water through, so the taste of the filter now is going to be much less than if I had just put grounds in and started brewing. Um, now I'm going to put my grinds in. Um, the strength of your grind matters, and that's actually something I can't specifically say. You need a 0.2 micron grind for French press or whatever it is. Um, what I can do though is pass around, I've got two samples. Uh, the first is French press. So this is a coarser grind. This is what this is what we use for French press on the truck. This is about what I use for cold brew. And then this is more of a, a pour over individual grind, Chemex. Um, you can see the difference in the grind size. And if you actually stick your fingers in and, and rub some grounds between your fingers, I'm not going to brew anything with that. So don't worry about contaminating the grounds. Um, you can sort of feel the difference in texture as well. Um, espresso then would be a, a much finer ground than than what that is. All right, so I've preheated. Um, with both French press, pour over, and Chemex, there's an important step that a lot of people don't do, which is to um, bloom your coffee grounds. What that means is I've got now uh, 50 grams of coffee that's in here. I'm going to pour about 50 grams, 50 to 100 grams of water on top of it, and I'm going to let I'm going to do what's called a bloom. Um, so that's going to let the water get evenly dispersed throughout the grounds, and I'm going I'm to let that sit for about 30 seconds. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to dose the rest of the, uh, or pour the rest of the water. So let's start here. I'm also brewing on a scale. So I've got a, I can see now that I've got about 85 grams of water that's in there. So I'm getting a nice even um, dispersion here. What happens is the grounds have all these natural oils in them. They're sort of blooming like a flower. They're sort of rising and, and uh, again, getting evenly dispersed. So um, basic coffee preparation, we talked about you want water temperature that is um, in that 195 to 205 range. You want a nice even dispersion of water throughout your, your bed of coffee grounds. Um, you want a brew time that's somewhere in the three to five minute range. Less than that, you're not extracting enough flavor. Uh, more than that, and you're probably extracting a little bit too much or a little bit too slowly. Um, so I'm now at about a little over 30 seconds, so I'm going to go ahead and pour and fill the rest of this up, get a nice even brew going here. We've talked a little bit about grind size from those samples. The other thing that I think that's really important to touch on is brew ratio. Um, and what that means is the amount of dry coffee grounds relative to the amount of finished liquid that comes out at the end. I have a few um, corporate coffee customers and actually restaurant customers as well. And one of the first things that I look at when I come in and I open up a new customer for, for coffee is what their brew ratio is. And what that means is, uh, in general, specialty coffee, high-end coffee, the kind that I'm doing, 
I'm looking for somewhere around one part coffee to about 15 parts finished liquid. Um, I was just at, at one customer recently, they were using those pre-packed, you know, pre-ground, vacuum-sealed little bags of coffee. They just dump one in and into their air pot, and off they go. Turns out that that was giving them a brew ratio of about 1 to 30. So they were using half as much coffee as they should have been using, and everyone was complaining about how bad the coffee was. But we just changed the ratio. I almost lost the account because they said, oh, well, you're, well that coffee's much cheaper. Why don't I just double the amount of coffee I'm putting in? Um, but so that 1 to 15 uh, ratio ma matters a lot. If you can get, get it in that range, you're going to get a much fuller, richer flavor in a cup of coffee. Um, one, the easiest way to do that is to buy a cheap scale. The one I'm using right here, I'll, I'll hold it up afterwards. I think it's $16.95 on Amazon.com. Super easy way to, to actually drink much better coffee. A lot of people do, do their um, grounds measurement by volume. Um, by you know taking a scoop out. Uh, the problem with that is that every batch of coffee has a different volume to it. Um, I've got one more show and tell here. I'm gonna pass around. First thing I've got is green beans. So this is what, when I buy coffee, it comes to me like this. It's a green, it's a hard seed. Um, it's, it's actually quite dense. You wouldn't wanna bite that. You wouldn't wanna stick it in your coffee grinder. And then I've actually got two different roasts of the same beans. They're in a little bit different proportion, but my tweed blend is my lighter roast, and my black magic blend is my darker roast. And you can see the difference. These beans are the smallest, this medium body roast is bigger, and then this French roast is, or um, near French roast is, is bigger still. So as beans spend more time in the grinder, they're expanding. The hot air is, is expanding. The water that's inside that green bean is, is forcing the bean to expand. So if you do it by volume, it's you're going to have lots and lots of variation in terms of like what's the right amount of um, going to have a lot of variation in terms of the amount of coffee that's going in. So you can really see a difference there. So for for 17 bucks to have a home scale that allows you to measure the same amount every time. And I think also every coffee drinker is different. So somebody might like 1 to 15, somebody might prefer 1 to 20, 1 to 12, whatever it is, but that allows you to consistently do it the same way every time.